Good morning, this is Zahn from Repro Products. This is a screencast video for looking at Revit and structural settings. This is in regards to a comment request on a previous uh, video about Revit structure and structural settings. In this particular video, we're going to focus a little bit on more on the structural load cases and load combinations. I have a Revit structure model in front of me. I'll head over to Manage tab of the ribbon. We'll go to Structural Settings. That's underneath the Settings panel. When you do this, you'll have a window that pops up that's called Structural Settings. You have Symbolic Representation Settings, Load Cases, and Load Combinations, as well as other tabs to get into. We're going to focus on Load Cases and Load Combinations. For the load cases, you'll notice that there are some that already come with the software, uh, dead load, live load, wind load, snow load, and roof load. And then there's a few that we've created here. There are also load natures as well that come with the software, dead, live, wind, snow, and roof live. And you can create some more if you need to as well. So let's say, for example, I want to create a load nature before I start working with creating a load case. I'm going to click Add for Load and Natures. And in here, I'm going to put in what I want. Let's just say um, VHVAC equipment, something like that. And so now that we have the load nature created, here under Load Cases, let's add a new one. We'll select inside the cell for the name and call it HVAC Equipment. And over here, the load case number is already defined by default. Uh, the type of nature, since we all have already created it, we can go ahead and place it here as well. And then the category, um, Let's put it for now as dead load. Now let's head over to load combinations. Here under load combinations, uh, you can see there are no load combinations created. You can create more. Um, you can create load combinations here. Um, the formula factors and everything are down here, and the load combination usage is here. So let's say, for example, I click Add. Under the name, I give it whatever I want. I'm going to say LC for load combination 001. And then over here, for the formula, you have to use the formula information here and its usage here. So I'm going to click Add. And the factor can be whatever value we want. Let's say, you know, 1.5. Combination will be a combination of dead load and say, for example, that HVAC equipment. And let's tag this as, say, 3. So as you can see, the load combination is automatically looking at both the factor of the two that we created and the case or combination of the two that we created. So it's going to actually tag it as 1.5 of the factor times the dead load, 1, case, plus the factor of 3 times the HVC equipment. The type is obviously combination, and the state is serviceable. Now, um, serviceable basically says, um, categorizes the load based on an expected force such as wind and gravity, and natural loads such as snow and, un and even deflection. Um, so we can do serviceability or we can do ultimate. That's serviceability. Ultimate is when the test the load against unexpected forces and the overall stability of the structure when pushed to an ultimate state. So we can set that to ultimate here if we need to. Um, and then load combination usage. You can't place anything in this column here because you don't have one created here. So if I click Add, or the load combination usage, I can just put in here the name that I want, say, uh, 
large RTUs, something like that. Now that I've done this, um, uh, let's go ahead and hit OK. Let's go back to structural settings. Go back to load combinations. And then we can actually use it for the usage. Now that you have created the load combinations uh, and within conjunction with the loads that you have and the custom ones that you've made, you can go through the process of adding structural loads. And that's it. There's a quick video again on load and load combinations for Revit structure. Thank you.